Today, as part of our Multiplication and Division Strategies Unit, we are interpreting remainders. Our learning target today states that I can interpret remainders to answer division word problems. So you're going to continue working on division skills using the different division strategies you've been practicing. Today, the division problems will have a remainder. We're going to spend some time deciding how we're going to interpret the remainder to help us answer division story problems. Let's review. What is a remainder? Remember, a remainder is any amount left over after dividing. It's what remains after we have divided evenly and is when the dividend does not divide, divide exactly by the divisor. For example, 124 divided by 4. When I divide using partial quotients, I get an answer of 31, and there is no remainder. 124 divides evenly into four groups of 31 without any leftover or remaining. However, if I divide 127 by 4 using the partial quotients method, I get an answer of 31. But notice there are three remaining that cannot be made into another group of four, so I have a remainder. My answer would be 31 with a remainder of 3, represented as R3. However, when we have a division problem that is used in the context of a story problem or a word problem, we cannot simply state our answer as 31 remainder 3. We need to know how to interpret the remainder to answer the problem. Let's review the different ways to interpret the remainder. As you remember from fourth grade, there are four ways you can interpret the remainder. The remainder can be part of your answer as a fraction or decimal. You can round up to the next whole number. You can ignore the remainder or use the remainder as the answer itself. Let's go over some word problem examples. If you cut a 127 inch board into four segments, how long is each segment? Using the same division problem of 127 divided by four, we would get the answer of 31 remainder three. However, we don't want any leftover board pieces. We want all of the 127 inch board to be used in these four segments. We would take the remaining three out of the four parts that we need and turn that into a fraction of three-fourths, so that each segment would be 31 and three-fourths inches long. Measurement is a good example of when we might use the remainder as a fraction. Here's another example. You share $127 equally with four people, so how much money will each person get? As we divide the bills, we have $31 for each person, but there are three remaining dollars left over. We don't want any leftover money, so we need to divide the three dollars into four parts. I know that four quarters equals a dollar, so there are 12 quarters in three dollars. If we divide the 12 quarters among four people, then each person would get three quarters, which equals 75 cents. So $31.75 would go to each person. Money is a good example of when the remainder could be used as a decimal. Don't worry too much right now about converting a fraction into a decimal, but notice that decimals can be used to represent the remainder as part of the answer. Let's try another word problem. There are 127 students going on a field trip to the amusement park. The students are divided into small groups of four. Each group will need an adult chaperone. So how many chaperones are needed? If 127 are divided into groups of four, we would have 31 groups with three students left over. We can't leave any students out. So we need another group with only three students in that last group. By interpreting the remainder as needing one more group to include those remaining students, we would round up to the next whole number. So in all, we will have 32 groups. The question asks how many chaperones are needed. If we have 32 groups, then we will need 32 chaperones, so each group will have one chaperone. This is an example of when you would round up to the next whole number. Let's try another one. 
At the amusement park, the roller coaster is a favorite ride. Each car of the roller coaster can fit four students. If all 127 ride the roller coaster, how many full roller coaster cars will be filled? If 127 students are divided into four students per roller coaster car, that means there will be 31 cars filled with three students left over in the last car. So in this case, the remainder isn't going to be useful to us because we need the full roller coaster cars. Therefore, the answer is 31 full cars and we ignore the remainder of three. Now check out this problem. If each car of the roller coaster can fit four students and all 127 students ride, this time the question asks, how many students will be in the last unfilled roller coaster car? So we know that there are 31 filled cars and there's one last car with the remaining students. So in this case, we want to look at just the remainder to answer the question. Since there is a remainder of three, there are three students in the last unfilled roller coaster car. This is an example of when the remainder is the answer. Now it's your turn. Today you will be working on solving division problems and you will need to interpret any remainders to help you answer the question. Remember to consider the ways you can interpret the remainder. The remainder can be part of your answer as a fraction or decimal. You can round up to the next whole number. You can ignore the remainder or use the remainder as your answer. If you need support as you interpret remainders to answer today's story problems, then feel free to watch the video again. And if you still need support, reach out to your teacher.